Hello, and welcome to Food Safety for Wash Pack Facilities, a training series brought to you by the CCE Cornell Vegetable Program. Implementing food safety practices in wash pack facilities is critical for ensuring that foodborne pathogens are not introduced or spread as produce is sorted, graded, washed, and packed. This is Caitlin Tucker, Program Assistant for the Cornell Vegetable Program. Throughout this series, I will walk you through the principles of food safety, the ideal wash pack facility layout, post-harvest water management, cleaning and sanitizing, and tips for cleaning larger washing equipment. Because food safety is a company-wide responsibility, we invite all farm employees to participate in this training. Here are some highlights from part two, the ideal wash pack facility. Be intentional about facility design or modification. Consider the five principles of hygienic design, ergonomics, and layout. Adequate lighting, cleanability, organization, good drainage, and pest management are all important features of a wash pack facility. Rodents, birds, insects, and pets can introduce or spread contamination and should be managed appropriately. Let's begin part three, post-harvest water management. Objectives for part three include, highlight the ways that post-harvest water can contaminate crops. Discuss the importance of monitoring pH, temperature, and turbidity. Define sanitizers and review sanitizer options. Review common ways produce is washed. Why focus on post-harvest water? As a reminder, post-harvest water is any that is used for washing, cooling, ice making, post-harvest fungicide or wax applications, or commodity movement. The source and quality of water used for washing produce is critical for food safety. Workers, animals, equipment, and produce can contaminate water. Water can easily spread pathogens and amplify even the smallest problem with contamination. Here's one scenario in which a small contamination event could be amplified by post-harvest water. You go out to the field to harvest lettuce, you conduct a pre-harvest risk assessment. But because you're harvesting lettuce, which has numerous folds in which debris or contaminants can go unnoticed, you don't see bird feces in one of the heads. That head of lettuce goes into the wash water with the others that you've harvested. In the water, the feces can spread throughout and contaminate the whole batch of produce, particularly if you do not use a sanitizer in the water to kill foodborne pathogens. As I mentioned earlier, the source and quality of the water used for washing produce is critical for food safety. Let's review different sources of water typically found on the farm. Number one, municipal water. Municipal or city water is routinely treated and monitored for water quality. You should be able to get a copy of the water test results from the city or municipality. Municipal water is considered low risk and is the safest source of water to use for produce washing. Number two, well water. Groundwater or well water is generally less contaminated. This is because the soil, clay, rocks, and vegetation act as a natural filtration system. However, wells should still be tested regularly, at least twice a season to drinking standards. Groundwater or well water is considered medium risk. Number three, surface water. This includes rivers, ponds, canals, creeks, streams, or any other body of water that is exposed to the environment. Because of environmental exposure, surface water can easily become contaminated by feces or other pollutants. It is very hard to control the safety and quality of surface water, which is why surface water is considered high risk and should never be used for produce washing. Another way produce can become contaminated in the wash water is through infiltration. If the crop you are washing is very warm and the water you are washing it in is very cold, a vacuum-like effect called infiltration can happen. The crop will suck up water, including any pathogens that are in the water. Infiltration can ultimately reduce the quality and shelf life of the crop. And of course, once pathogens are inside, they cannot be removed. Crops like tomatoes, peppers, cantaloupe, wilted greens, apples, and summer squash are more at risk. 
There is also more risk if you completely submerge the vegetables or keep them in water for a longer period of time. Wounded or bruised fruit is also at greater risk because there are open wounds that foodborne pathogens can enter through. To reduce food safety risks associated with post-harvest water, sanitizers can be used. Here are some things you need to know about the role of sanitizers. Sanitizers do not clean contamination from produce. Rather, they help to reduce contamination in the wash water. And ultimately, they help to prevent foodborne pathogens from contaminating the rest of the produce. It is very important that you follow label directions for concentration, usage, duration of contact with produce, and so on. Because sanitizers kill living microorganisms like bacteria or fungi, they are considered pesticides. As such, they should be registered with the Environmental Protection Agency. You should also check to make sure that they are food grade and safe to use with produce or food contact surfaces. There are many types of sanitizers available for use in wash water. Chlorine products are perhaps the most commonly used. This is because they are readily available and affordable. You can find them at almost any grocery store, hardware store, and so on. There are, however, a few drawbacks to using chlorine products. They typically require more steps to use effectively. This is because temperature and pH greatly impact chlorine effectiveness. Furthermore, they are also corrosive and highly reactive. They can cause harm to workers if not used properly, and they can damage equipment over time. Here are some tips for using bleach, a chlorine-based sanitizer option. As with any sanitizer, only use food-grade EPA-registered bleach. Make sure your employees wear proper personal protective equipment, such as gloves, goggles, and aprons. Calculate the sanitizer amount based on known target concentration of free chlorine. Emphasis on free. This is because chlorine can get tied up with organic matter or other dirt and debris. You may need to keep levels of chlorine higher to account for loss. Regularly monitor pH and free chlorine. This can be done with monitoring strips. Chlorine efficacy is dependent on the pH of the water. It is most effective at a pH between 6.5 and 7.5. If your water is too basic, you can use food grade white vinegar or citric acid to lower the pH. Periacetic acid and hydrogen peroxide. Many products like Sanidate, Oxidate, or Tsunami are mixtures of PAA and hydrogen peroxide. These types of products are highly effective at killing microbes and are chlorine free. They are typically more stable in the water and there is no issue with pH levels or water temperature. Because they are more stable, they generally require less monitoring. Calculations are needed for measuring out the sanitizer. These calculations are based on the volume of water and concentration required for sanitizing. Be sure to monitor with the corresponding test strips. You should still wear personal protective equipment, such as gloves and safety glasses, because these products are concentrated and can still cause harm to workers. Use a ventilation cap to off-gas. Spigots can be attached to the sanitizer container to allow workers to dispense the sanitizer more easily and safely. Other sanitizers that could be used for post-harvest water include ozone. Ozone is the unstable gas O3. Ozone kills viruses and bacteria through a process called oxidation. It readily converts to oxygen leaving no residue on food contact surfaces. It can lower cleaning time and reduce water usage. Though it is more effective than chlorine at killing viruses and bacteria, it is typically much more expensive. Other drawbacks include, low doses may not be effective in killing some viruses. It is reactive and corrosive to some equipment surfaces. And in order for it to be effective, it must be present at a higher concentration than is considered safe for humans. Another option is UV or ultraviolet sanitization. 
Germicidal ultraviolet light disrupts the DNA of bacteria, viruses, algae, and mold. It is a chemical-free sanitizing option and has been used for years to disinfect and sanitize drinking water, wastewater, air, and food contact surfaces. Like other sanitizers, there is some risk to worker health. Exposure to UV light can cause injury if you touch or look directly at the UV bulb while it is on. Whichever sanitizer you choose to use, it is important to understand the different factors that impact sanitizer efficacy. Here are some tips for sanitizer use. Number one, follow the label. Always read and follow the label instructions. Pay particular attention to how the product is intended to be used. For example, in direct contact with produce versus on a food contact surface. Identify the appropriate concentration that is required for the intended use. Sanitizer concentrations are typically measured in ppm, parts per million. And finally, understand how different water variables, such as temperature, pH, and turbidity can impact sanitizers. We'll discuss those in a bit. Number two, monitor sanitizer levels. Each sanitizer will have specific ways in which you should monitor the concentration in the water. Be sure you are using the right monitoring tool. You may be able to use an automated pH meter, monitoring strips, or other type of monitoring tool. Be sure you monitor the sanitizer level frequently throughout the use. Levels can change throughout the course of washing produce, if water is drained or added, if the organic load builds up, or if the temperature of the water changes. Check with the supplier if you have any questions about how to use the product, what the product can be used on, and so on. Lastly, be sure you are storing your sanitizer monitoring tools in an appropriate area. Tools, and especially monitoring strips, should be stored out of light and away from heat. Do not use monitoring strips past expiration, try to consistently read the strips under the same lighting, and store in the fridge if possible. Number three, monitor water temperature. Water temperature may affect the efficacy of the sanitizer, especially for those chlorine-based products. Chlorine sanitizing solutions should be at a minimum temperature of 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Be aware though that if water temperatures are too high, chlorine sanitizers can off-gas and become a health hazard for workers. Water temperature should also be monitored because temperature differences between produce and water may cause infiltration. Thermometers are an easy way to monitor water and pulp temperatures but be sure to stay away from glass and mercury thermometers. Number four, monitor pH. Water pH can affect the efficacy of sanitizers, especially chlorine. As I mentioned before, chlorine is most effective at a pH between 6.5 and 7.5. There are many ways to monitor pH. You can use pH test strips, handheld pH meters, or titration kits. All vary in accuracy and cost. As a reminder, adding chlorine and other sanitizers may change the pH of the water, so you may need to measure the water pH before and after adding some sanitizers. Finally, make sure you adjust pH as needed based on the optimal pH range for effective use of your sanitizer. Monitor turbidity. Turbidity is the measure of how cloudy the water is. Turbidity can affect sanitizer efficacy and pH readings. If water is especially turbid, you may need to add more sanitizer to maintain effectiveness or allow produce or food contact surfaces to be in contact with the sanitizer for a longer period of time. Turbidity can and should be monitored using a turbidity meter, a secchi disc, or another method. Secchi discs are circles that have alternating black and white quadrants. They can be placed under a clear plastic or glass container. Take a sample of your post-harvest wash water 
and pour into the container. If you are unable to see the disc at the bottom, this should signal to you that the water should be changed and that your sanitizer may no longer be effectively killing pathogens. Commonly asked question, when should I change my water? In general, there is no set rule for when to change post-harvest water. It ultimately depends on many factors we've already discussed. Water that is used to wash crops like leafy greens or cucumbers could perhaps be used much longer compared to water that is used to wash root crops like beets or carrots that are coming in with more soil. The type of sanitizer you are using will also factor in. The type of equipment you are using will factor in. Ultimately, it is up to each farm to develop a standard operating procedure for monitoring pH, temperature, and turbidity. This monitoring will ultimately help you determine when to change the water. And while we're on the topic of changing water, let's talk about how that water should be disposed of. For starters, what are your local and state regulations? Wastewater may be able to be discharged into grassy vegetative areas, away from surface water, ditches, and produce fields. It should never be discharged into septic systems or storm drains. Do not discharge water if the sanitizer concentration is higher than the label directions. If sediments build up in wash water, do not dump into landfills, streams, or other waterways. Okay, to wrap up this section, let's review some methods commonly used in washing produce. Number one, dunking. Dunking produce is a very simple and straightforward way for removing soil or other debris. This typically involves dropping the produce into tubs and agitating for at least two minutes for the water to bathe each piece of produce. You may choose to have multiple tubs to dunk the produce in so that it can get progressively cleaner and then drip dry the produce as needed. This water should be changed as soil, debris, or turbidity increases. Number two, bubblers. Bubblers are commonly used for washing greens. They usually consist of a tank or tub lined with perforated PVC pipes that are connected to a jacuzzi pump. This gentle agitation helps to loosen soil, insects, and it cools the crop down. Nets are then used to scoop greens out of the water. Greens could then be allowed to drip dry or be placed into green spinners. Sanitizer can easily be added to the tank, but be mindful that the PVC piping will also need to be regularly cleaned and sanitized as well. Number three, triple rinse. A triple rinse setup is just as the name suggests. This method involves using three tanks rather than one. Tank one is set with the sanitizer at a proper level. This tank washes off much of the debris and soil. Tank two is set with the sanitizer at an appropriate level. This tank washes off what's left. Tank three is set with a sanitizer of at least five to 10 parts per million. This tank rinses off produce but keeps a little sanitizer in the water as an added precaution in case some contamination makes it through tanks one and two. Number four, green spinners. Spinners are increasingly being used to quickly and effectively dry greens. You have the option of purchasing a manual spinner, which can cost anywhere from five to $275. They vary in capacity, anywhere from one to five pounds. Electric spinners are another option. As expected, they're much more expensive anywhere from $600 to $3,100. However, they are able to handle a bigger capacity, anywhere from eight to 26 pounds. And finally, there's the ever popular DIY washing machine green spinner. We see more and more farmers converting washing machines to green spinners, so here are a few things to know if you choose to go this route. New is best. You know its history and can feel assured that the washing machine is clean. To be effective though, modifications are required. This will take some time and should be done in the off season. Many farmers have done this and there are many resources available to help you modify one. 
I'd encourage you to check out University of Vermont's Chris Callahan's work on washing machine green spinners. Consider using a basket insert. And finally, it is critical that this equipment can be disassembled for cleaning and sanitizing. Washing machines were not built to be taken apart and cleaned and scrubbed and sanitized, but they absolutely must be if you intend to use them for produce washing. And lastly, we have the additional workhorses of the wash pack world. Barrel washers, brush washers, or the ACS produce washer. This equipment is much more complex to clean and sanitize and will require varying levels of disassembly. Like most aspects of food safety, every farm is going to have to make their decisions on which equipment or washing methods to invest in based on time, effectiveness, ease of cleaning and sanitizing, space available, infrastructure, and cost. So in summary, water quality is critical for preventing the introduction of pathogens. Surface water should never be used to wash produce. Sanitizers can be used to kill pathogens in wash water and prevent contamination. It is very important that you monitor water temperature, pH, turbidity, and sanitizer levels, as these all impact sanitizer effectiveness. All of the above variables can also help to determine when to change your wash water. There's no one right way to wash produce. Consider water quality, type of produce being washed, how dirty produce is, sanitizers being used, etc. Here are some resources to help you get started including instructions for measuring sanitizers, instructions for building wash tables, and shopping advice for washing machine green spinners. Thank you for watching part three, post-harvest water management. If you have any questions or would like clarification or help identifying resources, do not hesitate to reach out. You can reach Extension Specialist Robert Haddad via email at rgh26 at cornell.edu or by phone at 585-739-4065. You can reach Program Assistant Caitlin Tucker at cv275 at cornell.edu or by phone at 573-544-4783. If you would like to learn more about the Cornell Vegetable Program, visit cvp.cce.cornell.edu. Up next, part four cleaning and sanitizing.